Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, my name is Sydney Rauchberger. I'm a level designer here at Epic Games. And uh, I'm currently working on UT, and we're here today to just give you sort of a brief introduction to building your first arena map with the Unreal Tournament 4 editor. Um, and what I'm doing to start out with here is just kind of rearranging my layout a little bit to maximize the real estate from my viewports on the screen. I personally really like working with orthographic viewports, meaning top, side, and front, along with the perspective viewport, just to get faster, cleaner, more accurate results. Um, to start off, we'll just pick new level here. You can start empty, or you can just go with a template that already has some, you know, a skybox, a player start, a directional light, and some other setup some things taken care of for you. So it's easier to just get going with this here. Um, we're gonna look at BSP, so we're just gonna get rid of this static mesh that's already placed on the map here to begin with. Let's go ahead and delete that guy. And to start out, we'll go find BSP over there. And just drag in a box. Place that guy down. And switch back to the details tab and we can change all the dimensions and properties of the brush and we're just gonna go with something big here. Um, to get us sort of a base for our arena that we're gonna cut away from to actually create the room. Make sure that that's all nice on the grid. Double check it, looks good. And then to duplicate a brush, we just kind of alt drag, we hold the alt button, drag the brush around, change the type to subtractive because we want to cut away from the existing block. Switch back over to geometry edit mode so we can actually change the verts of this brush. You can just box select the verts, then move them with the widget. I want to make sure that we're inside of our existing additive brush here because that's what we're going to carve away from. Make sure it lines up in all the different viewports so we don't have any excess and we're just going to hit build to see the result from that. Alright, that's looking good so far. So now that we actually see how high our walls are, we might want to go in and say, hey, okay, that should be a little bit taller. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just select the existing two brushes that we put in there. We're still in geometry mode, box select those vertices, drag them up. And then, once that's done, we're now actually worrying about creating a bottom part to our arena here. So I'm dragging in a cylinder brush in the middle, again making sure that the placement is in the center. I'm going to go ahead and change those details again, get some different radii going. Set that to 500 on the Z. Make sure that it aligns with the floor. Change the brush from additive to subtractive mode so we can cut away from the existing floor. Uh, just build that again to see where it puts us. Alright, that's looking pretty good. And one thing we're noticing now is it's actually kind of dark in here, so let's just click on the directional light, set the indirect lighting brightness to something like 10, and build again to see if that's any better. Yep, okay. Now you can see the directional light is actually bouncing a lot more, illuminating the scene even in the shadows, so for our purposes here, that's good. And then, now that we have default textures, on all the different surfaces right now. I'm just gonna dig for some materials here in the content browser. We have some good ones in environments, shell resources, and in the materials folder, there's a few different sets that we use to shell our levels, and I'm just gonna go with the castle set here. And uh, you can just right-click a surface, select, select all surfaces. And then we're just gonna drag that material from the content browser on those surfaces to apply it. And that's already looking better than the fall texture. And then next thing we might want to differentiate between just the walls and the floors. So we're going to select that floor here, find another material, drag it on. And that'll do for now. We'll do the same thing probably for the upper floor as well. Find a different one, just drag it on. We're good to go. Now that we kind of have a basic room going here, probably going to worry about putting some actual gameplay in here. Um, so in the content browser, if 
you just go to the top of the tree there, we can search for weapon base. And uh, that'll allow us to drag in the bases that we use in the game to spawn weapons from. So when you drag it into, view into the viewport, we just again make sure that it's lined up nice and good there. Once the actor is floating above the ground, you can actually hit end on your keyboard to force it to sink down to the floor. You know, all drag him up, duplicate it around, because we probably want more than one weapon in here. Now that we have those guys in the map, we can actually select them, go into their details, find the weapon type, and let's see, for this one, I'd want to put a rocket launcher in there. So one nice thing is you can just type in the name at the top and search for things that exist. So do the same over here, say put a shock rifle in there, this other guy, let's put a link gun on him. Alright, now we have weapons on the map. And the next thing we'll probably want is for players to actually be able to spawn into the level. So for that we need to add what we call player starts. Under place actor, just find player start, drop him in. Let's find him in the top down viewport. I always like going into the top-down viewport for these kind of things to so just make sure the placement is actually correct in a nice space. The little arrow on those guys actually tells you what direction you're going to be facing in when you spawn, so we always try and make sure that that's not a completely nonsense direction. So you most likely want to be facing at least either where you're initially supposed to go or face towards the weapon, something that's actually conductive to you participating in the match. I'm just gonna fill in all four corners of the map here, so let's put four of those guys in there. Alternatively, also to get the actor to rotate here, you can just click on the icons and the top of the viewport. We have little widget icons for just translate, rotate, and scale mode. So for that guy, I'm just gonna click that button, rotate him around, and then switch back to my regular movement widget. All right. Now we got player starts in the map, so people actually have a place to spawn when you fire up the map. Let's so go ahead and build it again. It's looking good. And at this point, theoretically, we could actually already jump in and play it, but we actually also kind of need to figure out how you're going to get back out of that pit in the bottom there, because right now you'd just be stuck. So in the content browser, we're going to just search for jump pad, which is a generic jump pad class that we use in our game. I'm gonna drop that guy in, and you notice he has a little icon that spawns with him which you can select, which is actually just a position that you're gonna jump to when you uh, step on the jump pad. So we're gonna move that guy in a good position. You can see the line representing where you're gonna go roughly. Duplicate him over to the other side. Switch our widget again, rotate him. And now we have two jump heads in there on either end that'll actually allow us to escape the pit. And she's still not quite happy with the brightness here, so I'm just gonna bump the intensity of that directional light again and hit rebuild and see if that looks a little better. All right, that's much better. And now that we have all this in here, we can theoretically go in and just play, but we'll also want bots to know how to actually traverse the map, so for that purpose I'm just going to take the big brush that I added in the first... When we first began building this map, duplicate it, make sure it encompasses our entire play space, and again the top-down viewport is great for that, because you can make sure that you're actually in the right areas, that everything's covered. We don't need it to extend all the way up to the top of that play space because we don't need bots to know how to traverse that area. And then in the details, I can con take that brush and convert it to a nav mesh balance volume. And that's what the engine uses to determine where it needs to generate nav mesh for the bots to run around with. So now that we have that guy in there, we can hit build again. And now, if you want to make sure that your path's actually built correctly, you can go back into the viewport and Either hit P to just show navigation, or you can just click on show, and you'll see navigation in the list there. You click on that, and hey, we can see we generated some nav mesh in there. Um, for your team maps, you actually have another secondary system 
on top of just an av mesh that generates little nodes for you. And to just absolutely ensure that those guys exist, we currently need to just hit build paths again from the top there. And once you see these little purple lines going between different points, you know that you're successful. So at this point, bots will actually be able to successfully navigate this map. So you can go in, hit play, run around, make sure that the weapons are correct. You can go down there, double check the jump pads, make sure those take us where we want them to go. Yep, that's all working fine. So after running around this, we might decide that, hey, this is a little bit open up there, and it might be beneficial to actually go in and add some cover, especially around those weapons, because those will be contested items. So again, for that purpose, I'm just going to take the big original brush that I made. I'm going to alt drag it over to duplicate it, sort of line it up with the edge there of the pit, and then vertex added it into the locations where I want them to be. So my goal here is to create some cover for those upper weapon bases. Make sure in the top viewport that I'm actually in the right spot. Drag that together. Move them over in front. I'm just gonna switch out of geometry edit mode here. And then again, alt drag that guy down, copy him over. That's looking good. So I'm just gonna hit build again to see our changes. All right, so let's see, that's looking good. Let's see, we have some cover in there. Wait for our lighting build to come in. Once that's done, all right, cool. We added some cover for our weapons. Uh, again, making sure that the paths are there. Hitting build paths again, double check with show navigation, and yep, they're back. So now if we jump back in, we've got some nice cover there on the side. And yeah, we could go into the game and fire this map up and give it a give it a go with some bots and see how it plays. And I hope this is gonna be useful for you guys to sort of get a little bit of a start with our BSP tools and sort of covers, you know, most of the basics for creating your first arena map. So good luck and I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys can come up with.